The Riverside Local Society of the Archaeological Institute of America has held an archaeology expo for seven years. Our 2018 expo saw a decrease in attendance. Because of a social media campaign by the Riverside County Parks District, our 2019 attendance more than doubled the previous year. In October through 2013, our Archaeological Society held its first International Archaeology Day Fair at the headquarters of Statistical Research Incorporated in Redlands. We had 12 exhibitors and attracted about 170 people. The next year we had 13 exhibitors and a lecture by SRI's Don Grenda. The publicity for the event included articles in the local newspapers generated by us and SRI, in addition to our Facebook pages, and the second year we had about the same attendance. In 2015, we were looking for a new venue that had more room for larger interactive activities, somewhat of a built-in audience, and was also free to us and the public. One of our members was a homeschool parent and a former CRM archaeologist and suggested the Hidden Valley Nature Center. The expo was enthusiastically embraced by Margie Fuentes and her staff. The Hidden Valley Nature Center is a unit of the Riverside County Regional Parks District. Funding for the flyers, porta potties, printing, etc., was applied by the nonprofit Friends of Hidden Valley and small grants from the Archaeological Institute of America and the Society for California archaeology. The facilities at Hidden Valley allowed us for more extensive hands-on activities. We had 20 exhibitors and a little over 300 people in attendance the first year. Publicity went out using news releases, some Facebook ads, the county employee e-blast system, and flyers distributed to the local elementary schools. We contacted potential exhibitors by personal contacts some blind emails, and our objective was to have exhibitors from a variety of government, CRM firms, colleges and universities, and local preservation groups. We are very pleased at the response of the archaeological community to the event. They provided a variety of hands-on and some hands-off activities and demonstrations. When a person arrived, they were received a passport that could be stamped at the various exhibits. When completed, the passports were presented at the AIA tent and a person could select the prize. In 2017, we conducted a survey of attendees and found out that half heard about the expo through flyers distributed at schools. The expo worked until 2018 when all of a sudden we had a attendance drop to barely 200. The big problem was that year local school districts signed contracts with Peach Jar Incorporated to have all flyers, school announcements, community flyers be delivered to the parents email if the parents signed up with Peach Jar that was. Um, Part of the contract actually forbids schools from passing out any paper flyer flyers from other organizations other than the school directly. The parents signed up for announcements, then they would receive weekly emails announcing the school events, local communities events, etc. The school announcements were always the first up on the emails, followed by flyers from community and business that paid to have the privilege. The more, you, the more you paid, the higher your flyer would appear up in the email. Parents then could wade through their ads for dance studios, tutor classes, gymnastic lessons, along with flyers from the Y, Little A, Parks Department, etc. So our AIAs decided to look for other locations for the expo. Perhaps that would reinvigorate the audience. Margie Valdez asked us to come back. 
she said that the county was building a new marketing team and they would work to get the word out about the expo. As a result, our 2019 expo attendance increased to over 400. A couple of the events even had lines waiting. The taco vendor did good business. The Celtic music people were happy. For 2020, we were looking also to increase the entertainment offerings with a mariachi group, an Indonesian Kailing Tong group, and a bagpiper. But obviously, that's not going to happen this year. Even with the larger attendance, there's ample space at Hidden Valley for comfortable distancing between exhibits. So, what made the difference? For that, I'm going to turn you over to Marty Valdez, Interpreted Supervisor for the Riverside County Parks and Recreation and Open Space District. Thank you. As Craig mentioned, I am Margie Valdez. I am the Interpretive Services Supervisor with Riverside County Regional Park and Open Space District, RIFCO Parks for short. I'm here to share about our marketing strategy for the 2019 Archaeology Day event that was held at Hidden Valley Nature Center. Our marketing team called this year's approach Takeover Marketing because we put promos up on every platform that we have. This marketing approach was made possible because we now had the right staffing resources one with a strong social media marketing experience and another with strong graphic design skills. As Craig mentioned, we had seen a decrease in attendance over the past several years. In 2017, our attendance had gone down to 300 and in 2018 down to 225. Rifco Parks felt strongly that this was an event that we wanted to continue to offer to families in our community. So with that in mind, we knew we needed to take a broader approach when it came time to promote 2019's event. This event essentially took over all of our various formats and methods that we used to promote our services, programs, and special events. These included printed materials, website, e-blasts, press releases, and various social media platforms. As I move forward, I will be sharing our tactics as it relates to each of these. So it all started with creating an Indiana Jones style graphics to capture attention and create a sense of adventure. This became the base of all of our marketing materials for Archaeology Day, the branding, if you will. So once the theme was determined, our marketing team created an event flyer. That flyer went everywhere that it made sense. So what do I mean by that? Well, since one of our primary target audiences was families with school aged children, Flyers were handed out to all the school children who came out to Hidden Valley Nature Center's field trips. They were also delivered to local libraries and handed out at local community events as well. There's a lot of custom design work that happens beyond just the flyer that supported this takeover marketing approach. Our marketing team also had to rework our website's homepage slider. Our website reaches 273 thousand viewers per month. So this was an essential piece of the takeover plan. This banner was up on the homepage of our website for about 30 days prior to the event. We also had this event listed on our website event calendar. Next came social media, which is currently trending as our guests' preference for how they receive information about our services and events. This too required a marketing team to create the artwork not only for the teaser ads, but the backgrounds for all postings. One reason Facebook is a preferred platform is that it allows for two-way direct communication with our guests. To keep it fresh, teaser posts went out once weekly, starting one month prior to the event. Each teaser post highlighted one aspect of the event. The intent was to draw attention and pique interest. We also boosted this event on Facebook, and although there is an additional fee for this, in this particular case, it was $100. It allowed us to reach beyond our already captured regional audience of 13,740 viewers. This boost reached an additional 11,888 folks, and we gained 2,400 responses as a result. For an event to get attention, these posts must happen. 
since there are many competing recreational opportunities out there. The post also helps support our social media numbers. One last social media mention, three other platforms we did not use this marketing campaign were Twitter, Instagram, and our Park Tog blog. Going forward, we plan to tap into these as well. And as you can see, we left no stone unturned. Our marketing team reached out to local publications, and as a result, we had three published news, item, news items go out about this event as well. Another resource we use for almost all of our special events here at Riverside County Parks is the county e-blast system. This is an e-blast or an email that goes out to all county employees. This year, we sent out two blasts, one four weeks prior to the event and one the week before the event. These combined blasts reached over 19,000 county employees. Of those 19,000, over 2,400 were opened. So did this takeover marketing strategy work? We felt that it did. Attendance at this year's events was 667 attendees. That's three times the 2018 attendance. We truly believe there is a direct correlation between this year's attendance and the all-out effort of our marketing team. We here at Rivco Parks look forward to hosting another Archaeology Day event, hopefully in the year 2021. So I want to thank you very much for your time. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And again, thanks again.